So shall we retry that again? I looked and... Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Well, no, because it's foggy. Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. There we go. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. I presented it at the wrong one. Oh, hang on, we'll press him. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should stop working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call on my sister. Yeah, okay, so I hit it at the wrong one. So yeah, it was here that I had to present Lotus testimony. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang. You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Loda Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? You were paying attention at all to what I, uh, what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know something has been bothering me? I'm a witness here, I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts? What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, like, listening to something else. Something... else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Order, order, and stop that booing. Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Von Kama, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Ride, should we have continued? Should he continue his testimony? Yeah. Sadly. Your Honor. Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Uh, bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were another way out of this. Believe me. What Larry heard? It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to, to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it re real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard the gunshot, that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? Wrong country. I surely believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe that believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. 
The witness says he remembers exactly what the DJ says when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between the songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. Can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Okay, so you turn on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. Oh my fucking god. You don't know what, what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve alone. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you're listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all that we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had your headphones on? Yup. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember the moment real clear. I mean, what, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Okay. What did she, what did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease the pointless questions. But possibly we could know what the D radio DJ said to us. Indeed, Mr. Von Kama has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh well how do we know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Buds, please testify to the court. What was what? What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? That's when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. <laughs> okay, we're getting close to a meme here and I'll point out what it is when we get there. Are you sure? Of course I, of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Oh my fucking god, it's probably likely she's in her 50s. Hmm, maybe Von Kamo was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I ever heard. The worst, the most ludicrous testimony you heard so far. <laughs> Good point. I'm actually being serious. Oh, I believe you. But there is only a gleaming ray of hope. Uh, but, there's only, uh, but there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I gotta press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. It's only being Christmas Eve. Heard the gunshot. I remember... Real booming loud. I don't think that will be the case. Because the only way he could have heard the gunshot was when the DJ was talking. Because there's no music playing. Yeah, I'm just... Hmm. So I miss Christmas. So he heard a gun. So in Lola's. Was... Yeah, he heard the gunshot before midnight. Af yeah, and two, two sounds like gunshots after midnight. Yeah. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, Hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and... 
And there it is. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. It's basically, you see this on Twitter like the day before Christmas. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Yep. Oh, okay. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But this contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Mrs. Miss Hart and the old man said the gunshots were after midnight. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he's heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. Current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What, what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claims he heard the gunshot before midnight? Yeah, he's right. He's right? I would say he's right. Because... Because, again, right. the only reason she, Loda would have heard the gunshots... Because all of Lod uh, Loda's stuff was based on the fact that the camera took pictures when loud bangs went off. Because that's how the camera was set up then. Oh, yeah. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Plus, also, there could have been... Karma's just dot, dot, dot. Well, no, but but there could have been, as the gun says, it's been fired three times. Yeah, yeah I guess. It's intriguing. You mean you have evidence for this wild claim? Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Shows an empty light taken automatically. Aha! Uh -huh. Wait. This was taken automatically before midnight from Lola's camera. But wouldn't that contradict what we're trying to say? Her two gunshots just after midnight. Not really. This one was automatically taken. Taken on. We're trying to prove there was a gunshot before midnight. If this show, proves it. If we show there's a photo of no one on the lake before midnight, how can there be a gunshot? Because this one was taken from Lola's camera before it was altered. Oh. Before the sound was altered on the microphone. Oh. So it still would have gone off. Oh, I see what you mean. The shop would have set it off. Yes. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Sorry. Sorry. Look at this photograph. Laugh makes me laugh. <laughs> this was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Loda Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this, in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why, why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all what do you mean your honor this photograph was taken by an automatic camera that camera was set to go off in response to loud noises aha correct there was a loud noise on the lake at 11:50. this is why the photograph was taken in other words when larry heard the gunshot it was most definitely still christmas eve indeed it would seem that is the case. Then, what does that leave us? Miss Harsh testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is the fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two gun, two sets of gunshots within 25 minute pause between them. Why will this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. 
That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, hey, my nose was clear that night, man, clear. Also, he was at the boat ramp and Hut and Lola were set up on the set up on the clearing. They're too far away from each other to yeah, be triggered yeah. by sneeze. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 1150 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Yeah, it would be the pistol. Honestly, because it was fired three times. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both the witnesses who testified heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. Yeah. So, yeah. when then was the last shot fired? Only now I've realized the truth. The third shot was shot was the shot that Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night in the lake. Exactly. This is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the sealed samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in that case had the same idea as the murderer in this case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we will never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I got a hunch and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We already got in a guilty verdict. We might- we have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if, if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up the this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk tisk tisk. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murder or here than Miles Edgeworth. Now you shall go to the Shadow Realm! <laughs> Wrong, Von Kama. It is you that's going to the Shadow Realm. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> a man was shot... was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the way. That was shown by the witness's photograph. But defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on the boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one metre, it couldn't have been suicide. Well? The guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have a photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp of the photo says 12, uh, 15 past 12. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite bad? Uh, explain the two men on the... Explain who the two men on the boat are. 
murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer. Well, no, it can't be Hammond, period, because he was killed 25 minutes before. So it's Edgeworth and the murderer. That's what's Phoenix yeah. leaning with. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. Uh, and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 10 to 12, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth... Uh, Edgeworth wouldn't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. No, I'm Phoenix Wright. Ludicrous is over there, sitting in the gallery. Yo, yo, what's up, Hobie? <laughs> Mr. Wright, <laughs> tell us the name of the murderer then. Name of the murderer, right. It's... We don't know. <laughs> Can we just point at the fucking dude across the room? It was him. <laughs> you mean the old geezer? No, no, no I was going to say Von Karma. It was him. I nah. Point at the guy asleep on the floor. It was him. It was dad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Do we pull the Barrett out? It was his spurred. You don't know. But again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, the old, that old man. At 10 to 12, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Caretaker, the, 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 the caretaker of the boat shop. Where did he, uh, where did he? What? Where, where did, did he, he do, do this? this? Oh, where did he do this? There wasn't any boats on the lake then. Why... Ugh, fuck. Why would he have to go all the way out to the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. It would be the boat shop. So in all of this, where is the, the boat shop keeper's shack? There. Oh. Is his shack also the boat shop? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, would it be there? Would it be the little grove next to it? That's low. No, 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 no. The little blank space next to it up there. No, no, down, down, down. Too far down. Just that space right next to the boat shop. What? Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That space right there. No, it will be the boat shop because then the photo. Okay, so that's Lola's hidey hole. Okay, there. so then. Okay, yes, that makes sense. So then, where was Larry Butts at this time? Was he back there or was he? He just returned the boat. Ah, oh, so, so he wouldn't. It will be in the shack. That's so. That's why he wouldn't have seen it. That's right. Plus, Maya pointed out how clean it was in there. Good point. Yeah, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That's why he he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing him. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of a crime? Recall Larry's statement, if you will. <laughs> That's him looking for the thing. Yeah. <laughs> that night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. Did you sit there with his torch making a, a shadow go... No, it's like, like, he just had like a little, oh, <laughs> that's what happens when you fuck around with the fucking, sorry, <laughs> pulling the headphones out. God damn it. <laughs> sorry. Oh. So can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now remember, don't fucking move your arms too much. Okay. Otherwise it pulls out everything. Right. As I was saying, I'm probably guessing he had a little cut out of the boat and it's attached to a stick and he's just moving it around. 
<laughs> okay. Then, just as he was starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. That makes sense. Yeah, because if he was walking somewhere and the gunshot was heard anywhere else, he probably wouldn't hear it because of the headphones. It yeah. has to be close. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gort Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I'll take it slow, I might be able to figure out this- figure the rest of this out. That night, the caretaker of the bookshop called Robert Hammond to his shop. That was around 10 to 12. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was first fired- uh, was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and he went out on into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? It was the boat shop owner. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missing Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. The moment I send you to the Shadow Realm. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. It would be because he, he had to... I would say to create a witness. Yes. Because... Because otherwise, why? Because otherwise, he's a really shit shot if he missed twice. But it was to create a witness because, because I'm guessing Lola Hart would have been there. Yeah. yeah. Or Edgeworth needed to be the witness. Yes. I don't know. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That's to ensure that anyone who heard the shot will look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... <laughs> the murderer jumps from the boat himself and does a miraculous cannonball. <laughs> leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. Okay. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once he realized that everything else falls into place, the boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put on Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. What about fingerprints? The water would have washed off and fingerprints on material aren't... don't always work. It's got to be something the finger tint can actually adhere to. Okay. Oh, aren't always the best thing. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the, ev uh, the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff? Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well, while we're waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said is was mostly correct. Astonishingly, astonishingly so, actually. Yes. 
Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hemond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff. We are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him, quickly. We can't allow him to get away. Mr. Von Comet, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I can't declare a verdict under these circumstances. I'll extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize it, its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has to has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well, court's adjourned. Back outside. Yeah, Nick, you did it. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Kamen didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I s shifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, it's worth. That's me. Yeah, I... What? Nothing. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Exclamation. Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. <laughs> what is this smiling you keep on referring to? And how does one smile? A robot like me won't understand this. <laughs> does not compute. <laughs> File exe dot smile does not exist. I tried downloading from LimeWire once. I opened it and it corrupted my operating system. I had to be rebooted. <laughs> uh, oh, sir, I would recommend... it. Do if you don't want to be... So there's a YouTuber that did... um. There's a spin-off series called the Edgeworth Investigation Series. There's two games in the series, and this takes place after the trilogy, uh, the original oh, trilogy yeah. of this. Uh, his name's Jello Apocalypse, and he actually has some of his friends do the, some of the voices like while they're playing through the game, and it's just pointing out a whole bunch of contradictions. And the second series for the second game of videos is called Miles is a Robot. Uh. It's just... A ton of references to him being a robot. It's just... He is but, a robot. Yeah. Look at him. What else could he be? Maximilian Pegasus. Yes. Is a robot. That explains the shiny gold eye. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, watch it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's you. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. These human emotions. <laughs> <laughs> then I want to know what love is and I want you to show me. <laughs> I don't know whether or not to tell you. A dwarf? <laughs> no, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. Memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? Memory of a murder. 
To be continued. <laughs>